little bit of an issue with Randy's car on Saturday at the track. Um, we had fun. It was a good time. It's always fun when we're at the track, but it's, it's nice when it goes good and we don't have many issues. Uh, Saturday was not that day. Uh, we worked hard during the week, uh, got everything prepared, made the race. Uh, that was our goal. We made it. We were hoping we could go some rounds and win, but we did not. Um, one of our buddies, Jason Tyson, did. Uh, congratulations, Jason. That's awesome. Um, you know, well-deserved. You've been working hard as well. But when we went to crank this thing up on uh, late Friday night, early Saturday morning, uh, originally it did not crank. It did not fire. Um, did a system log on it, and we had no crankshaft sensor. So we did a, an adjustment, um, adjusted it to about 50 thousandths. Uh, car cranked right up, didn't have any issue at all. Um, we got to the track, unloaded the car. When we got the car unloaded, um, it sounded a little rough, like it was hitting and missing. Um, we adjusted that sensor down to 30 thousandths. Everything cleared up, everything went fine, everything seemed like it was good. Now, it's a Holly Hall Effect sensor with a, a, a magnet wheel. Holly recommends 40 thousandths to 80 thousandths. So we were on the very low end of, you know, what they recommend even a little closer, trying to make sure we were getting signal. Um, car seemed like it was fine. The first round, uh, shakedowns, and um, of course the car went into a burnout. <laughs> The way it was behaving, it's like it was too rich or too lean. And so I struggled. I tried lean and I tried rich for the last couple, uh, for the first round and for, um, you know, just a shakedown test and tune after. And it still didn't work. It just did not work. And so finally, um, we were able to get it into system log mode instead of normal data log. And that showed that the uh, crankshaft sensor, uh, when it gets up in high RPM, it's losing signal. Um, so we either have a, a bad sensor or either we have a noise issue. Uh, so we're going to figure it out, put a sensor on it. Uh, so hopefully Thursday we'll have it figured out. We'll be at Galat testing it. Um, and then Sunday at John Dock's race, anything goes, we're going to get in the, um, 28 inch tire, uh, shootout. So y'all come join us, see what happens. Um, and check this out. I'm going to show y'all a little bit about this Holly data log and the system log, what happened and what it looks like to have, a good part of a data log and a bad part. Okay, so this is Randy's uh, data log. Um, I'm going to show you guys how to set up a normal data log and the uh, system log. So first you got to pull up the, the software. This is the global file under the data log uh, where it says set up ECU log and you always click on that. Uh, then you have the option here, normal data log or system log. Um, typically when, when you're running the car, you're going to be in normal data log. It's always a good idea to, to make passes in your normal data logs. So system log is more detailed. Uh, the only thing I've used it for is looking for cam and crank signal. So normal data logs is what you want to use when you're racing. System log is what you want to use when you're having problems. Um, if you've got a well sorted out car and the tune up is pretty close and pretty good and you know it's not going to burn itself up, uh, you might could do a, a pass in system log or a half a pass and not hurt anything. But for me, I'm not willing to do a system log in any of those. Uh, other people may be, they may say it's perfectly fine to do a, a pass with a system log, but um, you know, that that's their prerogative, I guess. And you know, they're probably completely okay with that. They're confident in their tune. Um, so Holly is the only EFI that I've worked with. I'm not real familiar with uh, Fuel Tech or Mega Squirt or Big Stuff. I know all those are great as well. But Holly is what I'm, I'm used to and what I deal with. When you go into the system log, tell it what you want to do and it will record. Um, I've got mine set up to do it on 75% throttle. So basically anytime the throttle goes above 75%, uh, it starts the data log and it data logs for 20 seconds. Um, so if I'm just doing a cranking issue, uh, we'll hit the throttle, let off the throttle and then try to crank it. And that'll give us the cranking uh, you know, system log. If we're um, trying to get something in a burnout or on the two-step or something, we'll do the same thing. If the car is running, you know, you just whack the throttle real good and it'll start the data log and you got 20 seconds. So I'm going to pull up the, uh, the system logs we've done on Randy. So Friday night, the first one we did when we first tried to crank the car and it did not crank. Um, and typically this car, anytime we take it apart, it fires right up. The cam sink is uh, set with two screws, uh, permanently mounted. We have a little bit of adjustability in it, but we don't have to adjust it but it's mounted on the cam gear. So it has a magnet in the cam gear as it spins. So typically we don't have any issues starting this car. This is the type of balancer we use. 
the magnets are permanently mounted in the shell. Wouldn't start, so the first thing we did is, you know, I did a system log on it. Um, so this is what I saw. So the blue lines is the camshaft and the, the green line is the crankshaft. And if you look closely, you don't, you notice you don't see a green line. So that's a problem. And you see here, it, it's just flat lined. So it's picking up the, the camshaft like it should have, but there is no crank. So we made a, an adjustment, um, got down there, got under the car, Brian got under there. It had a little bit of excess uh, gap. Um, Holly calls for 40 to 80 thousandths. It was right on the upper limit of that, 70 to 80, so we tightened it up to 50 thousandths. And then the car cranked right up, and here is the, um, the starting of, of that, where we gapped it to 50 thousandths on Saturday night. And this was just a quick, um, it, it didn't actually run. We, I just told him to crank it over for a couple seconds. Uh, just to see if it was going to hit off and it's tried to hit off and then we just cut it off because I knew everything was good and I wanted to get it back in uh, normal data log. So here you can see the green lines. So these green lines are every time that the uh, crankshaft picks up a magnet and it fires. So this is important. So you notice that the camshaft, that's what starts the order. So then this starts your firing order. So this is number one. So I'm going to blow this up a little bit more too. And so now we've got this right here. This is one um, firing cycle of the engine. And so a small block forward, um, you know, the, the firing order, this is number one, this is number three, this is number seven, this is number two, this is number six, this is number five, this is number four, this is number eight. So that's your firing up order of typical newer model small block forward. Um, not Coyote or um, Mod Motors. I don't know anything about them, but a normal small block forward. So this is your firing order. You can see it hitting everywhere there. Um, there are no disruptions. So this is perfect. And then you let off the key and then we're good here. So then we got to the track. Everything seemed fine. Um, you know, we unloaded it and it was missing a little bit, like I said earlier. And uh, we tightened it down to 30 thousandths. We did not do any system logs there. Um, but this is, uh, you know, the system log at the end of the night where I called it the bad crank sensor. So, um, I'll show you what it did. So we see lots of green. So that's a, you know, a lot And this, these green, this is just a lot of information here. There again, it logged for 20 seconds. So I'm going to start blowing this up and you can see, I'll show you here. These are, these are, you can tell where you can kind of faintly see the red line there. So I'll blow it up a little bit more. Here's your red line coming up with RPM, and then it goes up there, peak RPM, and then comes back down. And you can see all these, these spots. So let's just keep blowing it up. I'm gonna just start right, like right there, and we're gonna scroll through. So you notice here we got nice, consistent um, blue lines um, for the cam, and pretty consistent green lines. I think most of those on the green lines or um, I think most of those on the green line are just where some are lighter than others. I think that's just the computer resolution. So we're gonna scroll through here. Now you can see this red line. Okay, so now check this out. So it's climbing in RPM. So right here, we're at almost 3,500 RPM. Now on the, on the, in the pit, on the trans brake, this thing would go up fine. Our trans brake was set at 3,600 RPM and it would hit every single time and it would not show us any indication. But if you start noticing here, um, you start seeing these gaps. I'm gonna, I'm gonna blow it up some. So now look at this. Uh, look at look at all these gaps we're starting to get. So right here, gap, gap, gap. It is only fired on this one. It has fired five times in that that cylinder sequence. So it's it's dropping cylinders like crazy. And then as we keep going, RPM comes up. Now we're at 4,500, 5,000. That one fired three times in that sequence. Then it picked back up a few more times, fired five times, and then this, this cycle here, I mean, look at this flat line. It got about 5,500 RPM and it fired twice. Um, so it's killing the motor. And of course, I was getting those lean conditions, so that is exactly why I was getting the lean conditions, is because it wasn't firing. It, the fuel was going through the motor, but it was, on, it was not firing it. So there again, I mean, you know, looking at your data and trying to, to, to determine what is proper, you can fully see here that it was misfiring like crazy. And generally, anytime you have a misfire or if you're on the two-step where you got un unburned fuel, 
then you'll get lean conditions. It'll show lean on your on your oxygen sensor. So here you go, it's missing, 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 and then it just, I mean, it flatlined, just stopped it. He was trying to do a burnout. So something's happening, and then you see RPM, it stops it. RPM starts to fall again, it's coming down. Still got some, some good misses. Oh, look at that one. That one there is, I mean, it fired one time in that whole, that whole um, cycle. So coming back down, it's starting to pick up some more. Um, another couple that it missed. Going through, it's, it's coming back, seems to be, and then it misses again. And RPMs are coming back down. And now as RPMs get lower, it starts picking it back up more. So now, at this point, I mean, he has let off the gas and the RPMs are coming back and it's at 3,500 or so. And now we're hitting on, on all eight cylinders again. Well, that one dropped out there. A um, couple dropped out randomly and then it starts picking back up. Um, and then, you know, it stays for the duration. Um, it stays back on. It never misses again on that one. It's only when it was revving high. So I'm gonna go unzoom this and then all the way down here at the very end, I mean, at 20 seconds in, he was driving it back. You can see it never, it never missed the beat, and it was driving like normal. So, um, you know, this is it. I mean, but it's uh, we got to, we got to, we're going to replace the, the crankshaft sensor, and hopefully that solves our problem. All right, hope this might help somebody in the future. Um, very in, uh, informative for me. Um, you know, always learning, always trying new stuff. But, um, you know, keep an eye out. Um, we'll keep you all updated. Watch out for the next video. Uh, like and share this if you don't mind. Thanks.